Hi everyone uh, and welcome to this session. Today we are going to look at uh, creating slightly longer codes. Um, and one of the things we had seen in the last uh, video, if you might remember, is the concept of libraries. Libraries are nothing but pre-written sets of code. And um, here is a library called random. As the name itself says, random means creating random numbers. And in maths, there's nothing which is random. So random actually needs a seed uh, for you uh, from you so that it can create random numbers. So the first part of the code is to import the library with a simple import command and then look at uh, creating random numbers. So yes, um, you just have to call the random integer function which is within the random library and you can uh, get to uh, create these codes. Uh, the uh, way to write an if else function you will remember is the fact that we put in loops um, uh, and uh, when we put in loops, we actually use indentation instead of brackets. In other, in a Excel formula, etc., you would have made a bracket, right? So if something happens, bracket open, do this. But here you just put an indent, take the value to the next line and put an indent. So here I'm saying uh, if the number, I'm defining a number, if the number is greater than zero, print that the number is a positive number. Anyway, always print that this is always printed. So you will notice that I have a number minus three and when I run it, it says this is always printed. If I was to just make this number plus three and run it, it will say three is a positive number. Now, a way to uh, constantly create codes is to create smaller blocks of code and then put them together. So here we have created two sets of code. One is uh, creation of the random number and the second is the creation of the if statement. Uh, so, uh, you know, we can combine both these sets of codes together and when we run it, we get uh, a longer set of code together which creates a random number and then checks if it is a positive number or not okay uh, the other way to do it is uh, uh, actually taking this even one step further and uh, printing that if the number is greater than zero print that it is positive or zero else print it's a negative number and you can see that you know the number of times uh, uh, you want to run this um, uh, code you can do it you can keep going up and running it and every time uh, it will run um, over and over again so then the question becomes that can we not uh, look at creating code which will run by itself over and over again and then yes uh, the idea becomes yes we should and here is one of the uh, utilities of having a list you can actually define a set of things and tell the uh, code to run through the list over and over again so here is a loop uh, to create the sum of all the values within the list. So what are you doing? You're starting with defining that there is a list called numbers and it has a set of numbers. Then uh, there is a way to add up all the numbers, which is that first you add the first and the second number. Whatever is the answer to that, you add the third number. Whatever is the answer to that, you uh, add the fourth number and continue to add the numbers till you reach the end of the list. That would be the sum of all the numbers within that list, right? Now, what we do here is to start with creating a value called sum, which is equal to zero. And for values in the list called numbers, we have to create the sum, which is equal to the sum starting with zero plus the value. So this means zero plus six, then uh, the answer will be six. And then look at six plus five and the answer will be 11 and then 11 plus three, exactly what we want, right? Uh, so we've already taken all the numbers of the list and run it and the answer is 82. And let's see if the code is giving us this 82 answer. And true and behold, this, this is the answer that we have also got by summing up the values if I was to use it as a calculator. So this is the place where we have used it as a calculator. Okay. And this has created a code to create a calculation over and over again. Right. Uh, so um, uh, now le let's look at certain things that if we want to look at creating values in a range. Now, if I say create a uh, range from 0 to 10, it will just tell me 0, 10. But if I say that create a list from a range, st starting from 2, going to 20, and 
every third value should be picked up, you will notice that it will pick up every third value and actually create a list. So what are we saying? We are actually automating the uh, way that even the list is created. So let's combine all those codes and we will get a combined code, right? So uh, which will uh, do both these functions. So the first thing we want to do is to create a list. And call this list numbers, right? That's what we want to do. So we're saying numbers. And then we want to print numbers just in C. Okay, so yes, the list is created. The numbers list is out. Now we want to just pick up all this value and say sum it up. You know? So you can see I'm actually using both the codes to now create a longer range of values. So this the first one is the print of the list created and this is the sum is uh, 57. Now suppose I increase this list to 50 and then say I want to do it. So here the sum is uh, uh, 0. Or oh, I wrote 2 to uh, 0 by mistake. So here. Okay, so it has created values till 50. Now, um, I think it gives you an idea that, you know, you can work with lists already present, uh, getting created from the front end of an app, etc. Or you can look at creating a list and then working out the values. Next piece to look at is actually looking at uh, creating some loops to do certain uh, checks. Like here, I want to create a loop. Uh, which will look at all the values in the range and check if they are divisible by 2 and the uh, remainder after dividing by 2 is equal to 0 or not. Right. So here you go. For the range of values here, I want to check if the value is divisible by 2 and then I, if yes, I want to uh, print that value. Okay. Uh, so um, here is if I want to do odd numbers, what do I want to do for the range from 0 to 10? I want to check if the value is divisible by 2 and there's a remainder of 1. And if yes, then it will print the odd number. Okay. So uh, this is one of the ways to go forward and create the um, loops. Right. Uh, loops uh, and these loops will print out for you the sets of values which meet a particular condition. Uh, the there is this example that I'd like you to see there I have made a created a list already it's called food and it's got Indian Chinese and Japanese food and I want to print it iteratively uh, with the value saying I like and I want each of the food from the uh, list to come in there one by one okay so the way to do it is to create this list called food Indian Chinese Japanese and then say for I in the range uh, of food uh, print I like and the food. Okay, so the range will ensure that the uh, values will stop after uh, the all the values in the list are printed. Similarly, uh, this is one with the numbers. So there's this list with certain digits, uh, 0, 1 and 5. For I in these digits, print I want is equal to I, else print no items are left. So it will go through print till the um, till the values here and then at the end, end with no items are left. You can actually put a closing statement. Okay. Uh, for values in the string, if value is equal to i, uh, you want to continue uh, and print the value as well as print a smiley face. At the end of it, you want to print a different kind of smiley face. Okay. Again, you will notice there's just a simple uh, difference in this way. Uh, what is the difference? Here you are actually, you already have a predefined list here for value in string. So it will create a list and then it will check for I. Okay. So this is one way to go about it. 
Now here you notice that we have put in a value called continue here, okay? Because we are not putting an if else. The way to write this same thing with if else would be like this. For value in I, uh, in a string, uh, it is just all the letters of the string uh, um, word. Value is equal to I, print the value, else print the in. So it will continue to go through all the values uh, and uh, print the value and at the end it will put the end. Okay. Uh, some, something very similar can happen uh, even in um, uh, numbers. So there's a string which is one, two, three, four, five. It's actually a list. For values in this list, if the value is equal to four, then you break it. Okay. That means don't go forward if you find four. Print the value, else print the end. So here you'll notice that whenever it sees four, it just stops. If I was to change the position of four, okay, and run it, you will notice it'll print everything till the time it comes to four, okay? So break actually tells when to stop. Okay. Continue helps you write the code without an else. Now, uh, before we go forward and combine multiple types of codes, I just like us to remember that um, whenever you use the percentage uh, sign, what are you saying? Uh, you are actually looking for the remainder, right? And um, you've already done it, but I'm just revising it because it gets used multiple times later on. And if you're doing a double divide sign, what are you looking at? You're looking at the whole number. And when you do a double divide, uh, um, uh, you know, plus one sign, what are you getting? You are able to get values um, which are one added to the... Um, quotient. Right, sorry, this here, I forgot to write this. This gives the quotient. Gives the quotient plus one, right? So you might ask, why doesn't it do five divided by three? Because we remember board mass. Right. So what does Bodmas say? It will first do the division and then it will do the addition. That's why. Okay. We will use this type of code when we're trying to do prime numbers, etc. So it is better to understand the basics over here. Uh, let's look at uh, one other example of using and creating slightly longer code. Want to present a range, the lower value starting at 10, we can even say lower starting at 10 and upper starting at 20. And we want to print the odd numbers between the lower and upper R. So this is the static uh, print uh, value that we want. Now, uh, after this, what should the system decide to print? For numbers in the range lower to upper plus one, okay, uh, if the number is greater than uh, one, uh, what it should do is divide the number by i and check if the remainder is equal to zero. Now, what is i? i is a set of numbers from two, starting two, and going till the half level of the number divided by two, okay, plus one. So, this is the second uh, number from um, uh, two till half of the max number of this range. Okay, so it should check like that and it should uh, print the number. Okay, and what should it be? It should give you um, a zero and then a plus one of that, right? So then only you will come to know that there should be a remainder of um, uh, some value, which will tell you if it's an odd number. So let's look at this. So it's given you the odd numbers between 10 and 120. Okay, I want to shorten this to 10 and 20. So yes, I can just run it and here you go. 
Okay. If I was to do an even number, how would I do it? If I also want it for the even number, all I do is uh, edit this code and for even numbers. And uh, to do the even number, all I did is change if the number divided by one, um, it gives you a remainder of one. Sorry, my bad. The number divided by i. And what is i? i is similarly, um, um, you know, defined. There's no change. Now, you might say, why am I doing so much? Can I not have a simpler way of doing it? Yes, you can. So here is a much simpler way to check a condition. I just do if the number is divided by 2 and it gives me a 0, print the number and that is good enough, right? So in this way, I will get the, um, uh, you know, number uh, uh, and a list of the numbers which are even. If I was to do it just for odd, then the similar thing can be done, right? What I do is I can just take this code, uh, insert the loads. And over here, I say the, the condition to be met is that there should be a, a quotient of one. Right. Whenever it's divided by two, and yes, you go one, three, five, seven, and nine, and that's that's the sequence that can come. You change it here; it'll change here. Okay. What is the problem here? That you can see this and function uh, value is coming everywhere because we have not written uh, that uh, uh, else the else part to it. Okay. So if we write the else part to it, we should we will get no last value. So here you remember um, that uh, we had uh, yeah, else print the end. Yeah. So something like that is going to take care of that. Else it will print the end. Okay. Um, so Let's go on with the next. Another reason it is if number is greater than one, for i in the range two is to number, print the i, and here you go. Okay. Uh, so there are multiple ways that we can do things in Python, and all of the Python conditions and if statements can be used in this uh, process. Okay, uh, like here is a very simple one. What are we seeing? Uh, we have a, a and B, and if B is greater than A, you want to print B is greater than A. And here you go. If you change this just a bit and then check for it, the condition gets checked and nothing is printed because B is not greater than A. Uh, again, if you remember, we, if we uh, print um, um, or put an else command, this code shall uh, change. Right, so uh, this is the way to add in the uh, code. We must remember that indentation, which is the white space at the beginning of the line, is the way to define the bracket piece. So uh, what we do in other languages, we create brackets. Here we don't need to create uh, brackets. We just put an indentation. So you can do uh, two, three ways of the else uh, statement, if statement, you can do if and else if. Now here, there's no S here, you will notice it's L if, you know, so first is if B is greater than A, print A and B are equal. Um, else if A is equal to B, print A. Um, if a, B is greater than A, print, print B is greater than A, and otherwise print A and B are equal. Sorry for that small uh, confusion. So here you go, right? And uh, you could also do three conditions. So you can continue to write else if uh, and give three conditions. Now here you will notice this is an editor and hence the color changes. Uh, if I don't, um, um, you know, um, are not following the norm, uh, then you will notice a color change over here. So as uh, new values will come in, it will continue to check. Now, if you were in a bank and you want to check that all the people who are applying for a loan, do they meet a certain uh, value of income? These are the type of statements you would write. Yes. 
that at least the person should have a be earning every month a hundred thousand uh, dollars or uh, rupees and uh, you know you can check like this okay um so uh, here you will notice that you can uh, check for uh, if a is this is just an example to showcase all the conditions that we already know if a is greater than b and c is greater than a then you might print both the conditions are true. Uh, if A is greater than B or A is greater than C, you, you can say that at least one of the conditions are true. So you will notice this is the way decisions are coded into the system, right? You want to code in decisions, create a decision support system by using um, codes like this, depending on the models you may have built. Uh, test if A is not greater than B, it will print A is not greater than B. Okay, so uh, you can do multiple of these statements and, um, uh, you know, you can also ensure that uh, two if statements are put together. If you do two if statements, both of these will get printed. Okay, um, if X is greater than 10, print above 10. If X is greater than 20, print above 20. So it's not a else if. Right. So both of them will get done. Now, here is an example which I want you to do. Uh, take the assignment in a class. The pass marks are 40. And if you get a first class, you need 60. And to get a distinction, you get 80. All those who pass go to the next semester. And you have two students, Peter, who has scored 56, and Dhruv, who scored 98. Uh, what is important is that you create an if and multiple if statements so that you get out the relevant comments for these students. So with this, I will end the video and I look forward to the next one. Thank you.